Hi everyone, um, I'm going to go over the circuit here because a lot of people are asking questions now or in, in interested in replicating. So uh, let's start maybe here at the uh, source, the power, and what I have is a full wave bridge rectifier that I'm taking regular AC from the grid, so basically 120 volts here uh, entering, and it's charging this capacitor. Now once it's change that 120 volts to uh, DC, basically uh, the voltage is going to be higher and it'll end up being at around about 170 volts DC. I've uh, installed a fuse here to protect in case something happens in the circuit, okay? And from there, the uh, positive side here of the fuse side is going directly to the coil here, all right? So that's the positive side of the coil. And the coil is a 800 feet of 20 gauge wire, a magnet wire. And uh, it has a total DC resistance of 8.3 ohms, uh, 63.5 micro henries. All right. And that uh, spool is a spool off of a uh, MIG welder. So that's the welding wire that uh, this, the wire is spooled on and uh, the more details is uh, available at the public forum that this is being shared at. And you can get that information uh, right next to this video in the description box. The links are there. Now, there's a circuit that is pulsing the negative, the negative side here of the capacitor, okay? And then is activating this um, MOSFET here, which is a IR840. Oops, sorry, too close. So that's the MOSFET uh, model name right there. Okay, and this circuit here is basically pulsing the, um, the switching that MOSFET on and off, okay, and that's a 555 timer. And basically here uh, between these timers is basically you got to set these resistors and all that kind of stuff. But this is the circuit that uh, that uh, configuration gives you the ability to adjust pulse width. Very important. You have to be able to adjust pulse width if you want to play with this circuit here. All right, because it's all about that pulse width, or also known as duty cycle, which is the amount of time that uh, that MOSFET will be turned on. It has to be a very short period of time. 10% or less it has to be. So uh, this potentiometer here, that's what's giving me the ability to adjust that pulse width, that duty cycle. And then these timers, uh, you have a capacitance that you set in there. And right there, that one there is, uh, I believe, uh, 0 0.026 microfarad that I have there right now and that's because I'll be showing you what it does at low frequency and uh, if we look at my scope shot oh yeah one more very important thing since I'm using an oscilloscope and that is um, uh, USB uh, interface which is this interface right there that's the scope that I'm using and it has two probes and it interfaces with my computer but what happens is this ground here on the probe could be attached to the common ground or the hot side if the receptacle is flipped okay, to the laptop could create a short circuit with the whole thing because I'm connected to the grid here. All right? So you have to uh, use an isolation transformer. And that's an isolation transformer here that I have. And, uh, I bought that on eBay for like used. It was like 10 bucks or something like that. So basically 120 uh, volts is going right here uh, from the grid and giving back 120 volts. But what it does is it isolates it so that it's not, that 120 volts is not now connected to the grid here. So my probe could be put into the circuit and I don't have to have fear of blowing up my computer or the uh, USB uh, interface there. Okay, that's very important. Let's look at the scope shot. 
Okay, so this is the on period here. Okay, we're just looking at what the uh, 555 timer is sending out. I had to, I have to have two of them for my scope to give me data here, meaning that uh, if I'm looking for a frequency, okay, uh, I need two of those peaks. So we're at 55 hertz and the duty cycle is at 5.3% at that, at that point there. All right. And um, we're going to, uh, my probe, uh, oh, actually, my probe is actually on times 10. That doesn't matter anyways. We're, we're just looking at frequency and uh, duty cycle uh, right here. All right, so now I'll start the circuit up. Okay, actually, before I start the circuit, let's talk about the recirculating diodes here. So our positive is here. Our negative from our switching MOSFET is coming here, the other side of the coil. And all you need to put is a diode. I have actually two of them here in parallel just in case uh, I don't know I just put two of them and it seems to be giving good results. Those two diodes are model MUR420. Uh, it's a good quality diode and uh, it's actually surprisingly rated at a lower voltage but I'm getting some good results with it so I don't know too much why that's about what that's about. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're really putting this negative here can't enter the diode okay here at this point but if we have a switch off of the coil that was energized what's going to happen is the coil will kick back okay which is known as some use the term back EMF or it's also known as an inductive kickback or it's also known as flyback Anyways, the coil kicks back the energy that was stored in there, okay, but going the opposite way that it was going in, all right? So now what will happen is that energy wants to go somewhere, and it'll be going this direction, in the positive direction, okay? And this diode allows that to happen. Now when the negative pulse happens, it can't go. It can't go this way, so it goes into the coil. When the coils switched off at the MOSFET, then that energy goes this direction. And I've put a switch on it so I can turn it on and off at will. Okay? And then it's going through a resistor. You don't need the resistor, but we're putting a resistor to measure heat here. And I have it going back to the coil. So one can actually just go directly. The diode can go from here to there. All right? And that's all you need. Very simple. That's all there is to it nothing to it. Now I've always been putting a magnet on top of my coil here to look at you know the amount of push that that's giving us alright so um, that's not needed the magnet has nothing to do with the whole thing you can do this without a magnet okay that's just a visual aid another visual aid that I'm now going to be utilizing pretty well from from now on, because I'm not trusting what I'm seeing with the meters, okay, is this light bulb. This is a 12 volt parking uh, light bulb, parking light light bulb. So it has actually a very small filament in there. I've shown that filament uh, before. You're probably not getting a good shot of it here, but it's very, very fine. It's, it's not a, a, a bulb that can handle much current. So I'm using that not to measure. This cannot measure anything. This can only display the amount of energy going in there. And a engineer at the overunity form known as point ninety nine username, he has now confirmed to me that it doesn't matter if there is ten volts going in the circuit, if there's a certain amount of light displayed at this bulb, okay, at ten volts. And if I reduce, okay, the duty cycle of the circuit and increase the voltage to 100 volts and that light bulb lights at the same intensity, okay, the, there is, there's the same amount of energy going into the circuit. And that's all we're interested. We want to see, okay, how much energy is being uh, uh, put into the circuit okay and what kind of work we can get out of that so that's a great news and I'll show you why I'll have to have another video to show you this alright so watch the next video thanks